Hello and welcome back. I'm Stephen Kuhn and we are going to continue in this video where we left off last time, which was we just finished wrapping up the merge. Now the whole point of this, just a quick, uh, quick little uh, synopsis about what we were doing here, is we were taking the modifications we made using the Jolt Transform JSON, where we dumped a lot of the uh, columns that we didn't want to keep. We also transformed our lat long into what I'm calling a geolocation field, where they're combined together as a common separated list. And we renamed the header for mag to magnitude. I think that's all we really did there. So we're sending that over this direction now. It's going to go ahead and do what it was doing before, which is writing itself into the table in the MySQL database. So that's going to keep working and doing its thing. We also have uh, up here. Let's go ahead and keep this running here. Uh, you know what? Let's not delete everything, though. Keep source file. True, let's go ahead and do that for right now. It'll just repeatedly keep going over and over. Okay. So in the process though, it's gonna send another successful copy of the flow files, not just down south, but also to, off to the east. Oh, I'm sorry, the west here. Now we have the evaluate done. So we're taking those changes, out of them as an attribute. We're taking those attributes, turning them into a CSV flow file. And then from there, we're moving on to the merge content where we want to combine a lot of these into one. So let's go ahead and output that. We can take a look at what the result looks like when we did the attribute to CSV and make sure it's showing us what we want to see. So let's go ahead and do details now because it's the content we need to look at. And we can see a perfectly shaped comma separated list here. Uh, no, we're missing our header. Pretty sure our header is supposed to be there. Let's take a look at this and see what we did wrong. First of all, let's stop it. Okay, now let's get back to it. Oh, wait. Header's down here. My bad. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at those files. Let's see. The attribute to CSV does not do the header. I forgot about that. That's when we merge the content down here, right? The header gets created at that time. Oh, man. I'm jumping, I don't know why I keep jumping ahead of myself here. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next processor that we need. So in this case, we want to make sure that we, so if we go back here and look at the list here, we can see under attributes, we have a, where is it at? Okay, so under attributes, we have a attribute called file name. Now, we, want, we don't want these file names, plus every single one could have a different file name. Uh, so we need to do something about that too. Uh, and it doesn't get done in the merge. Let's go ahead and terminate those relationships we're not gonna utilize there. So what we're gonna do here is a update attribute. And what we're gonna use this one for is to change the file name attribute into something different. So we wanna take all the merges from that relationship there Go ahead and move it up there a little bit, give itself uh, tighten up some. Let's go ahead and go back in here and delete attribute. Nope, that's not what we're doing. We're gonna update one. It's called file name. Make sure you get the spelling exactly identical to how it's being utilized in there already. And inside a file name, well, we're gonna do a couple things to it that will make it easier when we write into the folder or into the directory to know what's going on. Now, let's go, uh, we're good there, yep. So go ahead and take that and, oh, give it a file name again, because I accidentally, oops. Oh, no kidding, it's still there. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and just modify it now. Okay, so we're gonna use NiFi expression language. And this will allow us to go ahead and create ourselves a custom name. So let's call it Earth Quake Quakes merged Oop. and let's do an underscore now what I'd really like to have on top of this is inside the name of the file I'd like to you know I'd like to include the day when did we this file get made so let's go ahead and write that into it so in expression language we start with a dollar sign and we open open this up with a curly squirrely braces here and we now say uh, just like you're used to writing time and stuff like that, you can kind of use the same functions, but you can always look it up in the NiFi expression 
language page on the website. I provided that link down below inside the comments. We're gonna do now, open that like that. And then we're gonna do our next step, which is format. Open again, close. But inside of format, we're gonna add year, 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 month, month, day, day. Now, if you're using data a lot, you're probably familiar with this, so can't be too much of a stretch there. We're gonna close that off in there single and move on over to here, another underscore. And what I'd really like to include with this is the time. That way, time will make it so that we know no two files written will have the same name. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing again. Start or create the expression. Whoops, I added two of those. Now again. And let's go ahead and do format. In this case, I want hour, minutes, and seconds. We could go deeper, but I think that, I don't think we'll be writing too fast. So I think that's gonna work. Let's go ahead and close these up. Done there. And what am I missing here? Oh, on the inside. That's what we need, right? Okay, looks good to me from what I can see here. Good right there. Open, open. Okay, so we have the first one, open and closed. Second one, open and closed, open and closed, open and closed, open and closed, open and closed. Okay, I think we got it all. So there we go. We're gonna create a new, we're gonna update the attribute to reflect the new file name. Go ahead and apply there. We should be able to get the merge going now. So we have 775 total files here. Let's go ahead and push them forward and see if this works. Looks like they might be waiting up for some additional support here. Let's get some more in there. We just hit a thousand. The processor just kicked off. So it was waiting for that thousand minimum. And there we go, it wrote one file, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see if it gave us the results we're really looking for here. We got one file, still has the old file name, nothing changed there yet, but that's okay, because we haven't made that change yet. We can view this. And this does not look right to me. Hmm, I wonder what is wrong. We have one continuous line of stuff. Let's try to figure this out, shall we? Okay, pretty sure I think I know what I got. I missed here oh so I'm not sure I gotta remember where it was at okay first things first let's stop things right here so we can start building up another thousand we'll stop these guys too and then we'll go ahead and empty out the queue good news is we have 50 standing by because we do have that minimum of 1,000 threshold there uh, and then let's go to so it's not gonna be inside of here I think it's, ooh, I think it's, um, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look this up real quick on the website because I think I know what I missed here. I think I need a, a new line entered. And if I remember correctly, try to remember the right spot for that. Hmm. I think it might be here where you just do shift enter, get a second line in there. That actually might be it. Let me check to make sure. Oops, sorry, hit the microphone there as I was trying to look things up. This is why it's I enjoy moving flow files through one step at a time as I complete my steps. So I can go ahead and look back on things and see and check the uh, flow files as they move through to make sure I'm getting the outcome I'm looking for here. So I'm pretty sure it might be that one. It's not, it's not gonna be in the header because the header is just gonna do its own thing. Or actually, you might actually need one at the end of the header. Real quick, I wanna clean this up some. I kinda like, uh, make sure the header kinda looks the way I want it to be. We can do that. Okay, let's just see if this is really how that is the way I'm supposed to fix it, if I remember correctly. We need to push things through a little bit quicker. That five seconds is getting in our way right now. So let's go ahead and say, 
Give me more. Okay, dump that down to, ooh. let's go ahead and go for one second each. Should get them building up a little bit quicker. Things are looking good. Okay, so we got a build up coming here. That actually might be a little slow. So another way we can make that work a little bit quicker is every five seconds, because we were waiting for a thousand, give me 500 concurrent tasks. There we go. And we'll get our next batch in just a second here. There we go. Let's go ahead and stop that for a minute. Let these flow forward and see if that was the correct fix. And do the merge, get the file out. Look how quick that merge is. And let's see if this gave us the output we were looking for. Hey, what do you know? A little bit of work. So let's go back and recap on what was the fix here. So you come back into properties on the merge and underneath the merge for uh, demarcator, if I say that right, you want to, we want the next line to be a new line, right? So shift to enter makes two lines and now it applies that to every single one it puts in there. All right, excellent job there. Let's keep on moving, shall we? Okay, so now we have the next step is gonna be the update attribute, which we already created, but uh, it's not quite ready. So we need to get the next step in there, which is going to be, I believe we're gonna do a route on, so well, I don't think we need the route. Let's go ahead and move forward without the route. I think we can skip that. I don't think I need to put one in. I was just think, wondering what if we had blanks. I don't think we'll have blanks. So let's move forward. Okay, so we want a put. Let's go ahead and grab that guy. We want to take this now flow file and turn it into a file and go ahead and put the file. So there we go, we have put file. Let's go ahead and right click on it and do view usage. And under here, we can get an idea of what this accepts and how it accepts it, right? So we can see in here, you have tags, all the good information it tells you about it, the uh, properties that we, we're gonna be looking at. I'm not too worried about that, it's really simple. Just the directory where you wanna put the files, what to do if there's a conflict, replace, ignore, fell. In this case, we'll probably just say replace. Uh, create missing directories, so if you were trying to tell it to go someplace and it couldn't, it would do that, but this won't work unless it has uh, NiFi has access permissions to it as a user. So you wanna be careful there, maximum file count and all that good stuff. A couple other things, permissions, uh, owner and group. But what we want is read attributes. So when a flow file comes into this, it's gonna read the attributes and the one that's gonna read is what's called file name. The file name is used when writing the file to the, the flow file to the disk. So this is why we created that file name. So that's good, we know that's gonna get utilized. Let's go ahead and create that relationship here. And we'll just have it come off over here, why not? And let's go ahead and give it our path name. And let me grab that path real quick in my notes here. Got that, let's go ahead and go back here. We wanna write into this exact, the exact same directory where we're taking it from. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Let's go ahead and put that down. Apply, and there's one thing I just remembered off the top of my head here. Uh, let's go back to the update. The update is where we're getting the file name, right? Well, do you see something missing here? Because I sure do. We are missing. Oh, it goes on the inside, right? Yep, we are missing the extension. In this case, it's going to be CSV. Let me make sure that's correct. Because I feel like I might have done that wrong. No, I'm just looking up on the usage page again. Yeah, it goes on the outside, my bad. I was trying to remember if it's outside or inside. Okay, so now our file should look correct. Uh, so now when we do the update, it should push into the queue over here. And we should be able to check on that and see if it looks right. All right, let's go ahead and check the queue, list it. Check on the file here. 
And we still have our fat file here, and we have a file name down below. File name, earthquake merge, today's date, and the time, and .csv. Excellent. That is exactly what we are looking for for the output. Oh, and then uh, let's go ahead and look at a couple other things on there real quick, just in case you didn't notice. So as we scroll down, you see permission, root. This is the permission on the file it's going to have and all that good stuff. And then you have fragment count. You have the merge bin age, so those ones that got added, the merge count, 1290, and the Mimi type of the file and all that good stuff for the flow file. Okay, so we're done there. So I guess we can go ahead and test out the put, right? Let's go ahead and terminate these. We're all good there. And let's go ahead and write. Well, something happened. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the console here. List, what do you know? We have our file. That is exactly what we are looking for here. So we have just written the file that we are looking for. Earthquake merge 2020 02 07 15 14 57. Let's go ahead and jump on back here. And we can see it matches up with the UTC time that our server currently has. for, And that's where DiFi is getting its time from. So excellent. We just finished this one all the way through. We can go ahead and turn things back on. And let it go ahead and just push. We got 6,000 out there. We can see it's pushing through. 500 saved again. It's going to wait for a minimum of 1,000. And there we go. That one just went through too. Now, what if we said, hey what if we had more in that queue? Like, the idea would be, you know what? This guy is going to go way faster than this, right? In production, it's not going to have a five. Unless I really need and I have a reason for it, it's not going to have itself a five-second wait. So it's just going to be zero. It's going to run 500 at a time. Sure, why not? We just got room for it. That evaporates into nothing. Everything's done. It moves on to the Jolt Transform. It takes a little bit more time. Runs through here. We have 5,000. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. What do we get from that? Oh, it already processed that fast. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and list that. And we have another file there. So ls does l. And let's go ahead and take a look at the size of these files. So we have a really fat file right there. And let's go ahead and clear that up. And let's go ahead and cat the earthquake. And the one we want to look at is the last one. So... Let's see, six, so I think it's seven, right? That one goes on for quite a while. Definitely looks like more than 1,000 rows there, so excellent job. I definitely like that. And you know, we can confirm this way differently too. So let's go ahead and leave the console here. We'll come back to the put view providence. Let's look at the very last thing that came in here. So 1700 is on the top. Check out that guy. And we have the details, but that's not what we want. We want to look at the attribute. Scroll down here a little bit and we see merge count. 5,415 were put into that file. Excellent job. We just created ourselves a new path. That was very helpful. We got some another tool in our toolbox that we can use for moving data around in our workplace or for whatever projects we have going on. So I'll catch you next time as we look to expand on this even further. There are several many, several different options we can go with. We can, we might explore next time the uh, different usage on the Jolt here where we clean things up, we made a couple changes. Next we'll inquire about and learn how to use the query record, which I think you'll find very interesting. So. Please go ahead and take some time if you want. Add some comments down below. Let me know what you think. If there's something you think I'm missing, if you want me to add more. I'm trying to keep the videos around 15, 20 minutes right now to make it a little bit easier to digest. That way you get a little bit, you get some good content out of it pretty quickly here. And then uh, if you got comments on certain processors or you need me to re-explain something or go into more detail on something, definitely feel free to let me know. Uh, feel free to subscribe down below. That way you can be notified the next time a video comes out. And you can be one of the first ones to make sure you get to see it first. I'll catch you next time. You have a good day.